simple women in Africa who have made an extraordinary difference to their own communities. From Ethiopia to Gambia, from Mauritania to Tanzania, a quiet revolution is taking place. Illiterate and semi-literate rural women, most of them grandmothers, who have never left their villages in their lives, let alone going to another country several thousand miles away, are proving the impossible is possible. They are baffling high-powered engineers, universities, donors, development planners and paper qualified experts. By demonstrating incredible sophisticated skills and exposing the fundamental inadequacies of the formal educational system, the rural women between ages 35 and 55 have shown tremendous courage and left their husbands, children and grandchildren behind to come to Thelonia, a small remote village in Rajasthan, India. They have come to be trained in six months to be solar engineers. Unlike the university courses that are all theory and no practice, it is not surprising these women know more about installation, fabrication, repair and maintenance than any paper qualified solar engineer after five years. These women represent the profile of everyday rural Africa, from poor agricultural communities, housewives, daily wage laborers, grandmothers, midwives, farmers, small shopkeepers, now recognized and respected leaders in their own communities, even after six months in Thelonia, because the written word is not used while training. They know no theories of physics, electronics, mathematics, no names of any spare parts, and have never heard of generating power from the sun. But what is extraordinary is that they have solar electrified each house in their own village all on their own. They have been responsible for the implementing the first technically and financially self-sufficient solar electrified villages in Africa, indeed the world. In Ethiopia, between 2005-2006, 530 houses in 21 villages have been solar electrified by 34 rural semi-literate men and women. Today, the first Barefoot Women Solar Engineers Association has been registered in Ethiopia. 2007, five illiterate middle-aged rural women were the first Doreg women to solar electrify 270 houses in three villages of Tasakane, Tinjamban and Jigelia in Timbuktu in the history of Mali. Sitting in Tinjamban and there's a light of India. We're very happy tonight because it was very, very dark in Tinjamban before. Mariam Baji and Aji Kamara were the first women in the Gambia to solar electrify 75 houses in the two villages of Kankurang and Kafun Keng in 2007. Two women, Tansi Kanu and Fatu Karoma, were the first rural women in Sierra Leone to solar electrify 64 houses in the two villages of Kontaline and Miami Bana. The village got lighting 24 7 before Freetown. In 2008, Four women, two of them are grandmothers, are the first women in Mauritania to have solar electrified 250 houses in three villages of Muftar El Hail, El Garba, and El Jazira. Observing visually and working only with their hands, identifying parts and fabricating them only by their color, all the women sitting together on one table from Uganda, Tanzania, Malawi, Benin. Rwanda, Ethiopia and the Gambia are learning how to assemble charge controllers and inverters, how to establish a rural electronic workshop in small rooms donated by the community, install solar panels on the roofs, connect them to deep cycle batteries and solar electrify each house in the village they came from. The written word is not being used because they only spoke Havaric, Jola, Swahili, French and broken English. Under the Millennium Development Goals, MDGs, they could not be a more down-to-earth, cost-effective, community-based solution for the whole of Africa. From a gender perspective, it addresses all the goals from 1 to 7. What is unique about the barefoot approach is that the management, control and ownership of the technology lies in the hands of the communities. They are involved in the decision-making of how much they are prepared to pay, as a monthly contribution, and who among the poorest of the poor women should go for training as a barefoot woman solar engineer. When the target is the poorest of the poor earning less than 50 cents a day, it is inhuman and insensitive to talk about business models. The partnership model is by far the most sustainable model. 
where the state donor subsidizes the solar units or solar lanterns, like the subsidized grid power for towns and cities, and the community contributes to the stipend of a barefoot solar engineer, the repair and maintenance of the solar units, and eventually, after five years, replaces the battery. Poor communities in all these countries in Africa have agreed to pay what they now pay for kerosene, wood, candles, torch batteries, and diesel. Depending on the economic status, they have agreed to pay between three to five dollars a month per solar unit. This is a fundamental breakthrough because nothing should be free. What makes this approach unique is that after the training, no certificates or diplomas are given. The certification should be done by the community themselves. A certificate is a major incentive to migrate to the cities. That is why men are not selected. There is ample evidence to show that once the men receive training and a certificate from any formal training institute, they leave their villages within days looking for any job in the city. So what are the universal lessons we have learned from training poor illiterate rural women as solar engineers in Africa? Lesson 1. Any illiterate woman, including a grandmother, from any part of Africa who has never left her village can be trained in six months in India to be a confident and competent solar engineer. Lesson 2. Prepare the community first by involving them in taking major decisions on behalf of the whole village and only then bring in the technology, a genuine bottom-up approach. Lesson 3. Keep urban-based paper-qualified solar engineers away from the non-electoral villages because their top-down approach, like in the case of the Millennium Villages, is doomed to fail. They have neither the vision, nor the courage, nor the faith to select and train women as engineers. They also do not have the communication tools to speak as equals with poor communities. Lesson 4. No certificate should be issued. None of the grandmothers from any country in Africa have asked for them. Why would they need it? They have no interest in looking for jobs in the cities. Lesson 5. To reach the very poor, only a partnership model can work. The cost of solar electrifying 40 villages in by nearly 60 women solar engineers all over Africa is close to $1.5 million, less than the amount being wasted on one millennium village, on brick and mortar, on salaries and consultancies, on travel, on publicity, and preparing studies and papers. The mindset of the poor in these villages remain the same, dependency on the outside expert. By 2009, Rural women will have solar electrified villages in Benin, Rwanda, Uganda, Tanzania, Malawi, Ethiopia and the Gambia. The Indian government will have brought rural women from the smaller poor African countries, Mozambique, Angola, Guinea-Bissau, Cape Verde, Burundi, Eritrea, Sudan, Somalia to India. Almost all the countries in the continent of Africa will have women barefoot solar engineers, saving millions of litres of kerosene from polluting the environment and thousands of tons of wood from being cut, depleting the already fragile forests. There is no question the barefoot approach is here to stay. What Mahatma Gandhi said comes to mind. First, they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, and then you win.